Time now for today's most valuable pick. It's U.S. Bank Corp. Shares moving higher after Baird upgraded the stock to outperform in a move to take advantage of the recent sell-off in bank stocks. The firm calling it a rare opportunity. Joining me now on the CNBC Newsline is David George, who is the analyst behind today's call. Uh, David, thanks a lot for, for calling in here. So first, more generally, um, you know, what do you base this assessment on that, in fact, uh, a lot of the regional uh, bank stocks have been unduly punished, given what we've seen in the de deposit flight uh, and, and concerns about longer term earnings power. Well, hey, good afternoon, Mike. Thanks for uh, having me on the show. Um, I think what you, what you say is, is from, a, from, an, from a concern perspective, these stocks are down 30, 40 percent in a week. And, and we think that pr presents probably the best risk reward setup for many of these stocks since the financial crisis. This is not a crisis, in my opinion, clearly. There are a couple of companies that have had meaningful challenges from a deposit perspective, but I just don't believe that Silicon Valley or Signature are really relevant comparisons for the likes of U.S. Bank, PNC, Truist, and the like. Many of those larger regional banks, Mike, are actual beneficiaries of this period we're going through, um, and they're really more relationship-focused, less transactional focused, like a Silicon Valley might be. And their funding bases are significantly more granular, which is really critical in our opinion. So with a 6% dividend yield, just over six times earnings, we think it's an incredible opportunity to get more aggressive on these stocks. You also say that investors are getting carried away with mark-to-market -market accounting or with trying to run the numbers of, you know, if they had to sell assets at current levels, what would it mean uh, for, the, for the books? What, what are you getting at with that? Um, well, I kind of mean what we say on that. I think market participants are getting carried away with mark-to-market accounting. Mark-to-market accounting is great in a vacuum, but that's not how banks work. Banks use pre-provision earnings to pay for their expenses and credit costs over time. And I think one of the lessons that we should have gotten from the financial crisis is that is not how banks work. What investors are not really considering when, when thinking about mark-to-market accounting is the valuation of deposits. They're valued at zero. And as we're finding, Mike, uh, these deposits have very significant value. And, and the deposit franchise or the implied deposit values of banks like U.S. Bank and some of their peers are quite, quite low and I think represents just a significant undervaluation in our view. Yeah, of course, U.S. Bank always has been, you know, considered well managed, definitely on the higher quality end of the spectrum. Is there anything else going on specifically either geographically uh, with competitors or things like that that might make them more of a beneficiary? Um, I, I think the so that, that next level up in banks, to the, to the extent there is a, mo a modest amount of deposit movement, we think that companies like Truist, PNC and USB will be big beneficiaries. But I think it's important to note that what we've seen so far from a deposit movement perspective is really not a great read through for the vast majority of the industry. And the, the most banks have a very granular funding profile. Their average account sizes are much smaller. They've got more retail accounts. So it, it's really not something that, that is a crisis in our opinion. It, there's a crisis perhaps in confidence, but this has really been, in our opinion at least, just a full on panic uh, which is which is what when the kind of times we like to step in and, and tell our clients to get more aggressive like like this morning.